This is the German submarine U-843. And if she's looking a little worse for wear, that's because by the time this reel of film was shot, she'd actually been underwater for over a decade. U-boats. They were the most feared nautical hunters of both world wars. Silent. Ferocious. Winston Churchill famously said that the only thing that really frightened him during the Second World War was the U-boat peril. Early on, they had sunk thousands of tons of shipping, but then, as time went on and the technological tide turned against the U-boats, they were hunted down and sunk in droves. Decades later, some long-lost U-boats were recovered from where they'd lain on the seabed and boarded again, even by some of their old crew. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your friend Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs, and these are the true stories of three recovered, long-lost German U-boats. The First World War. The world's navies filled massive battleships designed to lob devastating salvos at one another like prize fighters. It's probably the first mental image that comes to mind when you even think about the word navy, but a furious war was being fought beneath the ocean as much as on top of it, because below the surface, hunters stalked their prey and exacted a terrible toll. The submarine had been a 19th century invention that by about 1914 was refined enough that most of the world's major navies had put it into use. It was the German Navy which had deployed the submarine most successfully. In typical German fashion, they received a stark, to the point name, Unterseeboot, literally under ocean boat or submarine, and the U boat was born. They hunted alone or in packs, operating mostly on the surface until a target was sighted and they would dive, carefully aligning their torpedoes and delivering a devastating payload. In the course of the First World War, some 6,000 Allied ships were sunk, totaling 14,200,000 tons of shipping. The U-boats dominated the waves, but in 1917, finally, the tide began to turn when the Allies began to change their tactics and engage submarines that dared to attack escorted convoys. U-boat losses began to mount. 375 were built, and in the end, 178 were lost in action. Because so many had been built, some ended up in weird and wonderful places. The U-118 was being towed after surrender when she broke her lines and washed ashore at Hastings in Sussex, providing beachgoers with what can only be described as an extraordinary view. But still, there were more incredible sights as U-boats, which had actually been sunk with their crews on board, were raised and recovered. One of these was the UB-1110, possibly the last U-boat to be sunk in the First World War. In July 1918, the boat was patrolling off the Sunderland coast in northeastern England, UB-110 was a coastal submarine designed to hug the shallower waters around Britain for easy targets. She'd sunk two ships in 1918, when her luck finally ran out and the British destroyer HMS Gary spotted her and ran her down. The British warship was commanded by none other than Charles Lightoller, who had been second officer of the Titanic. He was also a famous hard case. UB-110 was depth charged, damaged, and then surfaced, but not content to let the submarine fight another day, Lightoller swung his destroyer around and chased the sub down. HMS Gary rammed UB-110 and sent it to the bottom in a flash, and there were only 15 survivors. But what may have happened next is horrifying, because with the submarine gone and survivors bobbing on the surface, UB-110's commander alleged that Gary drew to a halt and its crew began firing into the water with small arms, even throwing lumps of coal. The shooting only stopped when a convoy of merchant ships arrived on scene, at which point Gary put lifeboats into the water and picked up the few that had survived. Lightoller, for his part, never even denied the violence. He said he refused to, quote, accept the hands up in the air business, and later said it was simply amazing that they should have the infernal audacity to offer to surrender, in view of their ferocious and pitiless attacks on our merchant ships. Destroy versus destroyer, as in the Dover Patrol, was fair game and no favour. One could meet them and take them on as decent antagonists. But towards the submarine men, one felt an utter disgust and loathing. They were nothing but an abomination, polluting the clean sea. Two months later, with the war still raging, UB-110 was raised from its shallow grave with a view to recover codebooks, ciphers, and any other precious material. Not only that, but the boat could be restored and remarkably put back into action as a fighting vessel under the British flag. She was located from a dirty patch of oil staining the ocean surface and it was found that the boat was some 144 feet or 43 meters deep. The photographs that resulted are nothing short of astonishing. These come from an album from the Tyne and Weir archives and museums. 
and show UB-110 in an incredible detail after having sat on the sea floor for months. The control room was confusing, a massive tangle of pipes, valves and gauges. The UB-110's bow was gone, it had either been cut off in the salvage or destroyed in the sinking. This photograph shows her torpedo doors and tubes almost fully exposed. The British salvers were horrified to discover the tubes still had torpedoes locked and loaded, armed with an infamously unreliable magnetic firing pistol that could have gone off at any moment. The crew's lockers were intact, virtually everything was in working order despite having sat submerged. In this photo, the crew quarters still have their wood panelling, and the folding table still works. In the end, the war came to an end, and the UB-110 was no longer needed. Restoration works were halted, and the boat was broken up for scrap. Well, as for Lightoller and the murder of the submarine's crew, it was never proved to have actually happened with certainty, and there was never any inquiry. Instead, for his part in the action, Lightoller was awarded a bar to his distinguished service cross. Flash forward about 20 years, and once again the world's major navies were at war, and again it was the German U-boat fleet that was relied upon to inflict some serious casualties on Allied shipping. In the early days of the war, the U-boats hunted with virtual impunity, almost undetectable and with no counter, but then Allied technology caught up and slowly the U-boats transitioned from hunter to hunted. On top of that, Allied airplanes owned the skies. U-boats spotted resting on the surface were bombed and sunk in droves. The U-boat arm of Nazi Germany had the highest casualty rate of any combat unit in the entire conflict. Around 75% of all U-boat men were lost. One victim of Allied countermeasures was U-843, a long-range Type 9C-40, a U-boat that was motoring off of Sweden. Sadly for its crew, the end of hostilities in Europe was just days away when a Mosquito fighter bomber spotted their sub on the surface. A squadron of Mosquitoes attacked with rockets, and the boat was damaged. Repairs were underway when the boat suddenly capsized unexpectedly, and she sank so rapidly that only 12 men of 56 survived. This was the fate of many German subs in the Second World War, and usually this kind of sinking meant the U-boat was lost to the deep forever. But U-843 was a unique case. In 1947, two years later, divers rediscovered her on the sea floor off Kattegat Bay, lying upright and intact. This sparked an idea. The boat had been carrying a valuable cargo of rubber, minerals, tin, and opium. The contents were valued at around £80,000, and the cost to raise the sub might equate to just about 20000 After a lot of careful planning, it was in 1958, some 13 years after the boat had sunk, that U-843 was hoisted to the surface. Incredibly, her captain had survived the sinking and was on hand to supervise the salvage. I can't even imagine what it must have been like for him to walk through his lost command again. There's this haunting footage of him stepping through the bulkhead hatches and into the control room examining the contents of the sub. No doubt they would have had to have cleared the remains of his crew out from their boat beforehand. I'm sure it must have been an extremely emotional experience. In the end, U-843 was broken up for scrap in Gothenburg after the valuables had been retrieved, a strange footnote of recent history. But while German submarines were recovered by human means, sometimes Mother Nature did her thing and recovered some long-lost boats. Recently in 2019, something interesting happened in Vissant, France, when the twisted and rusting remains of a German sub emerged from the sand and they told a fascinating story. In 1917, the German sub UC-61 was in trouble. It had become hopelessly stuck. The submarine was a mine layer, a part of the UC-2 class. The boat still carried torpedoes, but it also packed a nasty surprise weapon. 18 mines could be laid to catch out unsuspecting Allied shipping and sink them. At this, UC-61 proved very effective. Her career was short, she entered service in early 1917, then over four months she damaged or sank no fewer than 15 ships. This was a decent record for a mine laying sub, but then her luck ran out. In July 1917 the boat was trying to lay mines off the French coast, the water was extremely shallow, and near Wissant the boat ran aground and came to rest on the soft sandy sea floor. The captain and crew it must have been frustrating to bring their successful wartime career to an end like this. At low tide their boat was stuck high and dry, an embarrassing sight. They had to act quickly, they would be under arrest soon. They planted explosives and blew their boat clean in two. The explosions also blew off the bow and stern, exposing the torpedo tubes. Sure enough, French authorities arrived on scene and arrested the German crew, and after a brief stint as a local curiosity, the twisted remains of UC-61 were all but forgotten about. She was buried by the shifting sands and lost to time. 
But then in 2019, with the tide way out and after a heavy sea, locals were shocked to see a surprising sight. There, peeking through the sands, was the UC-61. The years had not been too kind, in fact, little of the boat remains recognisable. You can make out the outline of the pressure hull, which would have kept the crew safe from the crushing pressures of the ocean, and a general rounded hull shape. Locals say the submarine is visible every two or three years or so as the sea washes the dunes away. It's amazing to think the submarine was just left behind and sat there for over a hundred years, but can still be visited today. It makes UC-61 a unique sight because most other U-boats were lost at sea, and unlike the U-843, they would never be seen again. Across the globe today, hundreds and hundreds of German U-boats still litter the sea floor, most of them containing the remains of their crews. They are war graves and are mostly left alone, but if you're interested to see an intact German submarine, there are still a couple left, probably the most famous being the Type 9 submarine U-505 in Chicago, USA, which is apparently well worth a visit. Maybe I'll go someday. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we get new videos out weekly. If you want to support my work and get really cool perks like behind the scenes and early access, please visit my Patreon in the link in the description below or sign up as a YouTube member. Come and join the crew. And as always, stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you again next time.